Okay, welcome to another video. I've finally managed to get around to doing my look at Fedora 32 beta. However, it's going to be a bit more short-lived than what I want it to be because I've had to record it a bit differently. So I usually use an external capture card and record into another computer. But Fedora is just throwing me up all kinds of strange issues with that. So we're going to record it directly off this computer using OBS. However, that's also been sort of throwing out the random sort of crashes and things. I might even have a few errors left here. No, I don't. But we're going to try and just get it out there, get a nice quick look around, and hopefully we can do it in one take without crashes. So first things first, let's jump into the About section. As you can see, I've um, had to change the windowing system from Wayland to X11. So Wayland is the default with Fedora. However, it, uh, to get the OBS recording properly, it works better with X11. So we're using X11 just for this video. Um, GNOME version 3.36, so it's got all the new nice stuff that you get with GNOME 3.36. And there we go, Fedora 32. So first of all, what we're going to do is just talk about what I've done so far, which is not a lot. So all I have done is I've installed tweaks. And then what I've done is I've gone into there and I've toggle D so I can get the minimize and maximize I'm just so used to having it there obviously you can use the keyboard shortcuts and just do things like that but I much prefer just having minimize and maximize there it's just muscle memory so what we're gonna do is just start with what it comes installed with out of the box so we have gnome boxes which is a virtualization program much like you know something like VirtualBox or something like that but it's made specifically for gnome and it's actually quite cool so if you say go to create a virtual machine there'll be sort of featured ones there that you can download straight without having to go to a web browser and it also has more of a selection here and then if you press that there's quite a few stuff there for you to go through and then of course you can just use a local ISO ISO file as well um, let's keep going gnome calendar cheese for your webcam I won't open it up because it'll go a bit crazy clocks gnome contacts Nautilus is your files manager Firefox is your default web browser we installed HTOP, it didn't come with HTOP. <clears throat> Sorry. LibreOffice Suite, GNOME Maps. Let's open up LibreOffice Writer and see what version that comes with as well. Um, GNOME Maps, we installed OBS, which is the flat pack. Photos, Rhythmbox, software, Gedit is your text editor. And then we also have GNOME Disks, Archive Manager, Calculator, etc. As I said, we installed Tweaks. Also comes with characters now for your emojis, so I've tested this out so that you can go, you can drag it and drop it, or you can just click it, copy character, and then you can have as many Santa Clauses as you like. <laughs> right, let's go into help and about. So we are using version 6.4.1.2. I think that might be the latest version, or if it isn't, it's very close to it. So let's get out of that. Let's get out of that, and let's go back into the applications. So we got to LibreOffice Writer, we got to get it. So videos, again, it will be GNOME Video uh, Totem, which is what you'll get on most GNOME distributions these days. As you can see, Totem. So Totem is your default media player. And then if we go back into applications, weather now, GNOME weather. Um, and as you can see, it's found me automatically. And there you go. It's looking pretty bleak for the, <laughs> for the foreseeable future. So what we're now going to do is jump into the tweaks package that we have to install. And we're going to go into appearance. As you can see, the default is Eduata. So unlike Ubuntu, it's the sort of implementation of GNOME on Fedora is quite vanilla. So you won't sort of get any extensions like you would sort of dash to dock or things like that. So again, you'll have your sort of your dash here when you go into your overview. So your default, as I said, is Eduata. Same as the icons. And I must say, the icons are looking very tasty. Very nice. Um, and then if we go back into workspaces, it's going to be a dynamic, but you can just go to static, much like you would on any sort of GNOME distribution. I don't think we're going to do too much here because, again, because this is quite a new version of GNOME, and also this is a beta version of Fedora, not everything will work. So, again, settings won't open anything up here. Which brings me on to my next point. So, if you like your sort of extensions and stuff, you're best off waiting until sort of a final release before you really play around with this because again, if you go into the GNOME extensions, not a lot of them are ready yet. So I'll just quickly just, just show you with something like dash to dock. So if you were to go and install dash to dock, you'll get the error message. 
and then yeah so you won't be able to sort of install that but there are a few that are already up to date and working as they should so let's just quickly close that one off and let's see which ones it comes installed with out of the box so it comes with application menu so let's turn that on and now as you can see you get a little applications menu here with categories on the left which is quite nice actually don't mind that um, yeah let's leave that there and then it also has horizontal workspace launch new instant places indicator user theme so if we turn that on we can then change the shell theme and windows list display a windows list at the bottom of the screen oh yes i know this one and then you also it'll sort of be across your workspaces so there we go back onto workspace one um yeah i'm not too massively keen on that actually i think the first time i actually used that was on is it tails i think tails has that sort of by default when you use tails it will have that at the bottom there so that's sort of where we're at with the extensions at the moment but as i say some of them do work already so we showed it on ubuntu but i'll quickly show you again caffeine for example works straight out of the box so if you just go boom 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 right um, as I said we've installed some flat packs already well we've just installed OBS I think but what what you might want to do when you first sort of start up is flat pack is installed out of the box by default but if you go into flat pack let's just type in flat pack fedora and then if you go to here to the quick setup it's got like a one click install for the repository file which is pretty cool so just clicking that well I say one click it'll be two clicks if it opens come on what are you doing there we go so if you go click open now obviously I've already done it but what you do is it will have an install button there and then it will have the flat hub repository already there for you so what we are going to do is grab a couple of flat packs for the sort of editing part of this video so we're going to get Caden live and as you can see there it's version 19.12.3 which is the latest version as far as I'm aware unless they've just quickly made a new one and there you can see the source is FlatHub. So we're going to go ahead and install that. There we go. And then we're also going to grab GIMP. And it also has the uh, the family friendly version, which is called Glimpse, um, which I do believe is a flat pack. Yeah, so the Glimpse is a flat pack, but GIMP is a native application. So if we install that, that will be from Reg, uh, registry.fedoraproject.org so we're going to install that one um, by default there is no control T for your terminal shortcut so you're going to want to do that in settings so if you go into just type in shortcuts hit enter oh, getting a bit of a lag there we go and if you scroll all the way down I'm sure you know this but just in case you don't you can add your there's a little plus there where you can add any sort of custom shortcuts that you might want um, another thing I quite like about Fedora, so it uses DNF for terminal package management. Um, and you know how apt when you sort of type in a command for a program you don't have, it will probably prompt you to say, do you want to install it? I didn't know that DNF done the same. So if you type in, say, screen fetch, which I know I don't have, it will say you don't have it, command not found, but do you want to install the package, which I think is pretty cool. Um, we've installed NeoFetch. So if we open up NeoFetch very quickly, as you can see here we are now using 694 packages and they are rpms and we have 13 flat packs now so if we go to flat pack list let's see what we've got in flat pack so two defaults free desktop obs studio caden live gnome platform yeah cool so what we're going to do i've installed htop already so if we just see what ram we're using at the moment we are using 2.35 gig as you can see there we have got a 12 gig swap partition now I didn't make that I just done a sort of a uh, automatic install when I've done the installer so if you go to lsblk you can see what it does there is it separates your home and your root and then it gives you a swap as well so the home that it's given us is 35 gig and it's given us a 12 gig swap and then 70 gig is all to root I'm not sure if I would have partitioned them like that but I like it that it's separated home and root. I haven't used Fedora since like version 25, so it's quite a. It's almost like using it for the first time, to be honest with you, because I don't think I looked too far into it when I did look at it back then. So, what we're going to do is delete that now, we don't need that. It's in our temporary Mozilla file. There we go. So, now if we go into the tweaks package, we are going to take a look at the 
dark theme of Eduardo, which is actually quite nice. I like it a lot. So there we go. Here's the dark theme. So if we open up Nautilus, we can have a look at how Nautilus looks with the Eduardo default dark theme. There we go. So as much as I like the um, icons for the applications, I don't quite like the icons for folders. So what we might do is grab a different icon theme, but I might just do it in the terminal instead of downloading from the website. Let's just open up a terminal. I wonder if it's got mocha icon theme. I'm sure it does. I hate this keyboard that I'm using, by the way. I've been getting some complaints about this keyboard. So I've, um, I'm using like a, a Bluetooth Mac keyboard for this video for you people that get a bit annoyed about that sound. So there you go. I'm always thinking of you guys. So let's see if it's got mocha icon theme. Come on, baby. It does. Cool. We're going to grab that very quickly, and then we're going to apply that, see how that looks, and then we're going to do a reboot, get a quick RAM read. I'm also going to show you the login screen for this. It's a nice, actually. So it's got the new login screen, and obviously it's got like a transparent effect over whatever your wallpaper is. So what we're going to do is quickly change our wallpaper using one of their defaults. So let's go to change background. So let's grab something that will look nice in the login screen. There we go, that's got a lot of colours. Oh, I think that's already given me a headache though, so we're going to change it. Let's change it to that for now. There we go, that would be just fine. So, how are we getting on with the icon theme? Okay, the icon theme is all done, so we're going to go back into tweaks now. We might have to close it and open it again for it to appear. Yeah, let's close it and then reopen it. Uh, appearance and then we're going to go to icons and click mocha right so now let me go into Nautilus once more okay it's not changed our folder themes just yet maybe it's because we already had that window open no has it changed the application themes? It has. Right, all we're going to do is do a reboot, get a RAM reading, and just sort of wrap it up there. Okay, we are back. I quickly took a screenshot before anything went a bit too crazy. So let's go into pictures and see what the RAM usage was. Can you zoom in any more than that? Ah, there we go. So the RAM usage was about 1.5 gig. Um, as I say, we have installed a couple of things here and there though, so I should imagine it'll be a bit lower if you didn't do any of that. So that's not too bad. What I'm going to do now is get a little photo or video or something of the login screen. And we're just going to wrap it up there. But before I do that, let's just go into Firefox just for one moment. Um, restore session. So here's a few of the release notes for the latest version of Fedora. So as I said, we've checked out. We know that it's got 3.36 GNOME installed. It has early OOM enabled. What else have we got? So package updates. Fedora has also updated a lot of important packages, including Ruby, Pal, and Python. You also have the latest version of GCC. In addition, there was a lot of other things that have changed, improved, or fixed. You can take a detailed look at the change log there I'll leave all of these links in the description if you want to go over them yourself but yeah no looking very cool so what I'm, I'm gonna say 31 no oh, let's make sure this is 32 yeah this is 32 right what I'm gonna do as I said is get a image or a video of the lock screen and then I'm just gonna end it there Okay, so that's been the quick look at the beta version of Fedora 32. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.